Here, I'm going to show you how to use dates in Excel. And this will serve as an introduction to dates, where I show you how to input them, how to format them, how to add and subtract days, months, and years, and basically how they work within the spreadsheet, because it's not entirely intuitive. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel, so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, first up, let's input a date. All you have to do for that is to type something that looks like a date to you, and Excel will probably recognize it as a date. So I hit enter, it goes to the right of the cell. That's the first sign that it's probably a date. But now click it, go to the Home tab, and look up here in the number box. It says date. Now a default regular cell is going to have the general format. So I click this empty cell down here, and look up, and now it says general. So Excel saw this as a date and said, OK, I'm going to turn it into a date, and I'm going to change this cell's format to a date format. Now this is actually a special serial number within Excel, and we can perform all sorts of date calculations based on this. And that may sound a little bit confusing right now, but don't worry. In the very next example, I will explain it. So let's go on with another example of how to input a date. Just type it, like I said how a date should look to you, and most likely, it's going to be considered a date. And if you don't like the format like this right here, you can click the cell, Home tab, Number section, drop down arrow, go to one of these options, Long Date or Short Date, or click More Number Formats, or just right-click the cell. And it's off the screen right now, but it is Format Cells. And right here, go to the Number tab and the Date category. And we have many, many options. So let's go with this one right here. Hit OK. And now we have it exactly how we want. And in case this looked a little bit odd with 115, that's the American date format. And you're going to input the date with the format of the version of Excel that you have. And if you're ever not sure which one is first, month or day, just put it in a format like this and you will know very easily. Now, I said up here that Excel sees these as dates, right? But that sounds kind of weird because they look like dates to us. So we just kind of imagine that Excel sees this right now as January 15th, 2025. But you double click it and you see this. However, even this isn't how Excel sees a date. And that brings me to a kind of weird topic if you haven't encountered it. And that is that Excel stores dates as a number, a serial number. So let's go down here. We have January 15, 2025, but over here we have it how Excel sees it. So if I go ahead and delete this, and I go 1, 15, 2025, and hit Enter. Great, we have the date. I click it. It says date up here. Life seems good. But now, click the drop-down menu and hit General, the default basic format that is no format. And there we have the little number. 45672. Now, what does that mean? Very simply, it's the number of days since January 1st, 1900. So this right here is how Excel stores dates. And usually, they will convert it to a nice, neat little format that we can understand like this or this. But sometimes, and if you've worked with dates a lot, you will have noticed that you will get this serial number. And if you don't understand what's going on, you'll think, oh my gosh, I've messed up my spreadsheet. What is this weird, crazy serial number? Don't worry, that's just how Excel sees dates. So a fun little thing is, how do we get January 1st, 1900? Well, if you have an integer like this, just a one, a whole number, we can convert it to this right here if we just go up here and change the format to a long date. Make this bigger, and there we go. So it's kind of funny how that works. And you may think, OK, now why are you teaching me this? It's very confusing. I don't need to know it. Well, when we go to add days and subtract days from a date, you can imagine all we have to do now is simple arithmetic. Plus 1 is adding a day. Minus 1 is subtracting a day. So storing dates like this makes it very easy to perform date-based calculations. And that's what we're going to do in just a moment. But let me back it up, get the one back in there. And let's move on to entering it as text. So I've showed you how to enter a date, and I've showed you what it means to have a date, and I've showed you how to verify that. If you change it to the general format and you see a serial number, or you just click over the cell and you see date up here, 
But what if you just want to enter it as text? What if you don't want it to change at all? There are a number of reasons why you may want to do this, and it's very simple to do it. So let's go down here, enter as text. And to notice how these dates are on the left side of the cell, these are all on the right side of the cell. So that's how you know these are seen as text. But how do you do it? Well, there are two ways. One way I recommend if you are going to be inputting a lot of dates, like let's say in a big column of data, just change the format of the entire column to text. So it is the text number format. And then when we go to input our date, it will not change to a date format. So I click the cell, it is text. I can change it to the general format. It will still be text just like this. However, now that you've changed it to the general format, if you double click and hit enter, Excel goes ahead and converts it to a date. So now if we change it back to general, we have a serial number. So you can easily mess up your dates, yes. But if you have a whole column just set to text, what you type in there is going to be seen as text. The other way to do it, to really, really force it, is, let's zoom in now, put a single quote or the apostrophe right there before it. Then whatever you type is just going to be stored as basic text. And you notice that there is no apostrophe right here. You do not see it. You only see it when you double click the cell. And if we want to see how many characters are in the cell, so let's do equals a len to count the number of characters in the cell, you will see we have nine for that one and nine for this one. So the apostrophe is not counted. A hidden little guy that forces what's in the cell to be seen as text. Now let's go ahead and clear these guys and move on to the next example. So let's get the day, the month, and the year from a date. Here we have our date. I click it, and we can see here in the number tab it is a date. So all we want to do is to get these separate pieces of it out. And it is a very, very simple to do that. Let's clear these guys. If you want to get a day, you just do equals day. That's it. And it returns the day of the month a number from 1 to 31, as you can see right here. So let's hit tab to get that in there, day, and you just click the date, and you see it says serial number. So when you have date-based functions, the arguments are often going to say serial number. Serial number is this guy right here. And remember, since this is input as a date, Excel sees it as a serial number. So don't get confused by the terminology. All that means right there is, hey, give me a real date. Give me a date that I see as a date. That's what Excel is saying. That's all. So we select the cell with a date, hit enter, and we get the day of the month. Month, very, very easy, equals month, the date, enter, year equals year. So thankfully, we have something that's pretty darn easy to remember in Excel. To get the day, month, year, you use the day, month, year function. Very simple. Now let's say that we want to combine numbers to make a date. So basically we're going to do the exact reverse of what we did there. We've got a hard-coded number here for the day, the month, and the year. Now let's go ahead and make it an actual proper real date. Very, very easy once again. Equals date. You want to create a date, you use the date function. What do we do? Year, month, day. We select a year, we select a month, and we select a day, just actual numbers. It doesn't have to be a serial number. It doesn't have to be anything special. Then we close it up, and we have a nice date. And if I click this and go up here and set it to the general format, you see the serial number once again. So we have verified it is a date. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of math. Let us add or subtract days. I told you how to do this just a moment ago. All you have to do is to get the date and add or subtract an actual number from it. So a whole number here. So let's go down here and do that. Equals this guy plus this guy. That's it. And now 115 has become 120. I put a negative sign in front of this guy and we get 110. So days are very, very easy. The next two will be not exactly as easy, though not too difficult. So here you have a date plus minus a number, you're good to go. Now for adding and subtracting months. So you still have your date right here and you still have a nice little number right there. But 
For this, we just use a nice, simple little function that Excel has given us, the eDate function. And we can see here it says returns the serial number. Remember, that's the code word for a date that Excel recognizes as a date. So it returns the serial number of the date that is the indicated number of months before or after the start date. That's a rather complex way to say it adds or subtracts months from a date. So eDate. Now we have a start date. I love how earlier it said serial number, now it says start date. Once again, just give it something that it sees as a date. So here's our date and comma months. No plus sign, no minus sign, just the second argument is what you want to add or subtract. Hit enter, good to go. We went from 115 to 615. Let's go ahead and subtract five. And notice it also updates the year here as well. So it's 2024 now instead of 2025. So very, very easy to do. We just have the eDate function. Now the eDate function, I have to admit, is something that I find rather easy to forget. But in a moment, I'll show you a very robust way to add or subtract whatever you want, regardless of if it's the day, the month, or the year. And so if you forget this, it won't be the end of the world, because the other one's very easy to remember. So let's move on to years now. Once again, you have a date and you have a regular number. But here is where we're going to be breaking things out a little bit. So what we're going to do for this one is to use the date function. Remember, that's how we create a date. But what we are going to do to create the date now, instead of hard coding these numbers, is to use the year, month, and day function to break this guy up into its separate parts and perform whatever math we want on those separate parts. So first up, we use the year function to get the year from this guy. And then we just add or subtract the year. So I'm going to do plus here where we have the years. And then we just finish building the date with the month function and the day function. So all of these date functions play very well together. So that is what we end up with. It looks crazy, but it's just three simple functions used to break up a date. Then we perform a little bit of math right here. Then we pop it back into the date function. And it's made a bit easier here because the names of these functions are the same as the names of these arguments here, year, month, day. So that helps to make it a bit easier. So here we go, 5, 20, 30, minus 5, 20, 20. And finally, let's do it all at once, adding or subtracting days, months, and years. All we're going to do is what we just did in this last example. So we have here a date, and then just three regular numbers, and we continue the pattern from the last example. We use the date function to break it up into its parts, and we perform math as required. So we have the year now, and we just add the year here. Then we have the month, month, add the month, and the day with the dates, and add the days. Close it up, and there we go. Just three arguments right here, right here, and right here. So it's not that difficult once you break it up into its pieces like we did and we build up to it. Just three arguments and a little bit of math. Hit enter, and there we go, 625, 2028. 20, and we can test it out, minus 3. And then let's go minus 5 and minus 10. So now we have a date that we can very easily control with these other cells right here. And once you get to this point, this level of understanding, you are pretty far along for understanding how to use dates in most of your applications. But I must say that there are many, many date functions, and I could go on for hours talking about all the things you could do. Thankfully, don't worry, I'm not going to do that here. But I will leave you with the formulas tab and the date and time section. And you can see a bunch of date and also time related functions here. So there are lots of helpful functions. If you're working with dates, go ahead and just look through this list, and you might find something that will help you out. But for this tutorial, you now know how dates work, how Excel sees dates, how to input them as text if you don't want Excel to see them as a date, and how to add and subtract days, months, and years. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.